Well, you know, in my videos, I'm all about advocacy, okay? Awareness, okay? Um, see, the problem is, is that mainstream media uh, has always portrayed the homeless uh, as a negative, okay? Primarily because the homeless does not contribute to the system financially, okay? All right? So therefore, uh, I'm about creating awareness of the realities of homelessness that uh, mainstream media does not show the public. Ron Austin, nice to finally sit down with you. Okay, cool, Jason. How are you doing? Good, good. All right. okay. It's a playlist in your YouTube channel called Homeless in Tucson. Right. And it's, it, it, is, it is about showing the 360 degree picture of what homelessness looks like in Tucson, okay? And it covers many aspects of homelessness, although I'm not quite done with it yet, okay? And so I'm about awareness, okay? Uh, uh, awareness perpetuates people wanting to do something uh, positive uh, to change a situation, okay? And that's what I want to be. I want to be a catalyst. Okay, in order to enable people to have the knowledge necessary in order to go forth and do something about uh, the, the situation in Tucson. Okay, what uh, if I'm just a private citizen watching this video, nine to five job, you know, maybe I got kids or family or whatever's going on in my life. What would you, what would, what would you suggest that someone like that do? as far as if they wanted to do something positive for the uh, homeless population in their city? Well, the simplest thing is, is that when you encounter a homeless person on the street, is you recognize his humanity by instead of looking through him, look at him. And maybe even a, a smile if you're uh, in that sort of mood, okay? Uh, but the homeless are used to people looking through them as if they don't exist. And then there's a number of steps along the way that could be done. Uh, and the, another thing that you could do is you can go to uh, a shelter, uh, the Primavera Shelter, the Salvation Army, a Gospel Rescue Mission, and volunteer, okay? And talk to the homeless people, okay? So, so, so that you can finally realize that they are people just like us, not some sort of other entity, okay, uh, or other thing, okay, but people just like us who uh, uh, want the same things that we do, okay, have the same sort of desires that we have, okay, and many of them may have been your neighbors uh, do, uh, that got caught up in the subprime mortgage crisis. The subprime mortgage crisis made a lot of homeowners who didn't know anything about homelessness made them homeless. I've watched you for a couple of years on, on social media. Um, and then I, I've talked to a couple of people about you and they say you're quite an interesting guy who's lived quite an interesting life. Um, I guess I wanted to start out with, uh, I remember you saying that you actually met Malcolm X at one point. Can you tell me about it? Certainly, sure. Um, uh, back in, when I, in my youth in Buffalo, New York, um, uh, the Muslims, black, what was called black Muslims at that time, the followers of Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, they uh, set up a mosque, mosque number 23. And so uh, I was attending the mosque for about like a year, but never really joined the mosque, okay? Until Malcolm X came down from New York, okay, one particular night, and his oratory was so strong uh, that uh, it prompted me to actually become a black Muslim, okay? Yes, and I did, and you know, I was one of those black Muslims running around in, in a red bow tie and, a, and a, a, a black suit and one of those FOI hats, uh, FOI being Fruit of Islam hats. And uh, I even actually uh, uh, guarded uh, Malcolm X uh, one time when he spoke at the uh, University of Buffalo, okay? 
And um, tell tell me about the university. What what type of university is it? Well, it's, it's just a. It's like the U of A. Okay. Okay. It's like the U of A, uh, the University of Buffalo, same sort of thing. And uh, Malcolm X uh, was invited to uh, to do a a talk to the students, and it was a rabble rouser. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I think at the, during that time was he not getting? He was like. They weren't allowing them on a lot of universities. Is that correct? That's 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 very true. That's very okay. true. At that time, they weren't allowed allowing them in a lot of places to speak. But uh, in this particular one, uh, he garnered a lot of student uh, uh, people that were really interested in what he had to say and also his movement. Um, so yeah, I became a black Muslim, uh, and I was a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I, yes, I met Malcolm X. Wonderful, wonderful. Shabazz, Malcolm Shabazz, we called him at the time. Okay, and um, what was there? Uh, you know, I assume there was probably quite a positive impact in your life as far as be, going into the Black Muslim faith. Uh, what kind of positive things occurred to you at that time? Well, you have to realize that at that time, that was like in the '60s early 60s and at that time um, uh, it was difficult for black youth to get a decent job okay and you felt disenfranchised you pe felt like no one paid any attention to you uh, that you were just uh, uh, a little moat of dust and uh, what happened was that the nation of Islam gave me uh, the uh, the opportunity to belong okay and and they treated me like brothers okay the brothers and sisters treated me like brothers they they would give me rides they would feed me they would teach me uh they would uh be with me you know what I'm saying and that was something that uh it was difficult to get at that time uh at i, I didn't in buffalo at that time i did not hang around with a bunch of black people okay uh we lived in a um a neighborhood that was partially white, partially uh, uh, Puerto Rican, uh, Arabic, and black, okay? And so there was always a lot of animosity going on between the various groups, and uh, I, I felt peace and belonging in the Nation of Islam at the time. Okay, okay, yeah, definitely, I can understand that. Any, any real group you know, when when they when they accept you, sure, it's a wonderful thing. But I'm glad, I'm glad that worked out. What did you think? Um, uh, let's see. Malcolm X went on his homage, and he came back, and now being the spokesperson of that whole movement, he kind of altered how he saw religion, which actually challenged the black American Muslim movement. Uh, what do you think about his transformation, maybe being a little closer aligned with uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and his philosophy? Yes, well, you know, he went to the Hajj in Mecca, and, uh, uh, and at the Hajj, he uh, saw that there was white people that were Muslims. Fact is, he saw that all nation people were uh, Muslims, and this was at a time where um, it was it was preached that white people couldn't be Muslims. Is that is that about right? Well, at, in in the in the nation of Islam, yes, that is okay. true. It was taught that white people were the devil. Okay, and that uh, uh, there was a little mythology going on there, whereas uh, uh, the God uh, created uh, the good people, which were the dark, darker people, and the devil, which was the white people. How, how do you see that that ideology now? Do you see it more of a perversion then? Well, you know, r right now I know none of that was true, but that stuff gave me a sense of pride and a sense of belonging and a sense of who I am as far as my blackness is concerned and, and my place in the world, okay? Uh, and it worked at the time because, you know, I sucked it up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So did you embrace what Malcolm X was preaching after going to Mecca or did, did that take a little time to sink in? It did take a little time to sink in because um, there was a lot of conjecture 
within the nation of Islam as to what he was saying now. Okay, and uh, so you, 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 there was a there was some positive, a lot of negative, and so it was a wait and see thing as far as I was concerned. So what what happened after that in your life? Well, uh, what happened was that I I'm formerly homeless. Okay, and at the time I was homeless, I was a crack addict, so therefore I was in double jeopardy. Okay. Uh, and this was after your yes, in okay. long after right okay. I'm, I'm fully grown now okay uh, and so I, I was a crack addict and I was homeless and uh, a lot of people assisted me in the process of getting back stabilized getting to where I'm at right now so I look back down that road I came and I says oh I left a lot of brothers and sisters out there in the street here but here I am all comfortable okay and have all the goods of, of civilization at my fingertips so I need to pay this forward so the first thing I did was I created with a friend of mine Diana V Figueroa uh, uh, the Tucson feed the homeless project and we used to go to Santa Rita Park every two weeks feed the homeless give them uh, uh, clothing uh, and, and bag lunches and since we both worked in social services uh, we used to, we'd triage people into various agencies unofficially so to say well I said to myself well this is okay but this is a band-aid but there's nothing wrong with this band-aid because everybody needs a sandwich every now and then and a clean pair of socks but I need to I want to do something I can sink my teeth into so I went to access Tucson and learn how to become a filmmaker. Oh, wonderful. Yes. And for those, I mean, I'm aware of what Access Tucson is. Um, coming from another state, though, I had no idea what it is. So could you describe what, what Access Tucson was at the time? Ac Access Tucson was a wonderful organization that uh, would allow a person, a man or woman, walk into the building off the street and uh, take classes in uh, how to shoot video, all aspects of video, okay? Sound, uh, recording, uh, video, videography, uh, uh, um, managing uh, groups of, of, of media people into getting uh, done what they want done. And if that person had, has, has something that they need, need to be said, uh, then uh, they could shoot a video about it. And it would show up on cable TV. This was long before YouTube. So none of the young kids are there be like, what are you talking about? You could just open your phone and they are you <laughs> channel twelve and I think it was another yeah it could be shown on TV on channel twelve and I think there was another channel also. And it, it was a great opportunity. You could actually have a show. I had a show on Access Tucson. Okay, so what, what did you do while you were there? Well, okay, I, uh, well, you know, uh, I was, I did a documentary on homeless youth called The Homeless Youth Project. So in order to promote The Homeless Youth Project, I created a half hour show once a month uh, where called Homeless Youth Project and uh, I would invite people on to uh, uh, the show who were doing something to do with homelessness, okay? And we would have a conversation. Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful. So did that, did that uh, uh, was that a seed that, that went to something else? Did that grow into something else? Well, actually, it was, it was a promotion for the uh, Homeless Youth uh, Project uh, documentary, which I, I made. Uh, and actually, I, I was given eight thousand uh, dollars by a local organization to make that documentary. Really? Wow! Wow! Quite accomplished! Quite accomplished! And then I know uh, most recently you've been doing the same thing, but you were using modern technology of YouTube to accomplish kind of the same thing. I've seen a, a number of your videos that feature what's going on when homeless and homeless activists. Um, here in Tucson. So what is one of your most memorable points in, in that uh, little adventure that you had uh, on YouTube and, and going out? Well, actually, it's actually, okay, uh, my uh, YouTube uh, uh, page, which I've had for quite a long time, is under my name, 
you go search for Ron Austin and you come up on my page and uh, my channel, so to say. And uh, one of the most impressive things that really occurred was that when I was doing the homeless youth project uh, and we had to, I took three other videographers with me and we had to traipse into a local wash to interview uh, some of the, two of the youth that uh, were that actually didn't end up in the video in, in the documentary, and it was unfortunate because you know you you know you get a you, you shoot a lot of video in order to make a small uh, video out of it, okay? Uh, but it was really a tearjerker, okay, to hear these guys talk about how they were treated by their parents and their siblings, and uh, it, it, it that stuck with me, although they didn't get into the doc. Okay, okay, it, it, it was uh, abuse though, yeah, it was abuse. growing up with, with some, some abuse, do you find that that, it, that has a lot to do with homelessness, like a, a cause of homelessness is growing up in a violent, maybe verbally or physically or sexually uh, abusive environment? Well, whenever a youth becomes homeless, it is always, always an adult's fault. And that's the way I look at it. I mean, because, you know, we have, a, we, we, we make these little things, these children, okay, and we're responsible for them until they become grown, okay? If they're not grown, then something you have done drives them away, something negative. And then some of them don't get a second chance once they, once they leave the house. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Ron. Thank you so much, man. I